might still delay. Okay, I can hear now. Okay, let's start. Oh, Only so people fast. here, so fast. <laughs> okay, while while we both share the link mm -hmm. on her Facebook page, uh, let me just introduce everyone to this episode. Uh, we are on episode number nine. Let's just call it from Berlin to Bangkok. It has been quite an eventful week so far, even though it is only Tuesday. Now, yesterday, as everyone should already know, there was a march for, for sorry, there was a march by Kanak Rasadon from Samyan Midtown all the way down Rama Fo, up Sarton Road, and ended up on the front gate of the German embassy. I was there also, and staring at us in front of the gate were lines of police officers. Now the purpose of that march was to one, unfold, raise the banner, and on the banner it said, "Patirup Sathapat," reform the monarchy institution. And also, Kanal Rasadon submitted an open letter to the German ambassador. The details of the letter, if you are on Twitter, then of course you already have read it. Even if you're on Facebook, you have read it. Many, many people have shared. The contents were quite controversial, but not without some validity. But also, yesterday, October 26, uh, the German foreign minister, Heiko Maas, once again commented on the Thai king, and it's the same content as he has said before on October the 8th, only a few weeks ago, which basically he was discussing or giving a warning about the alleged activities in which the king allegedly conduct political activities, Thai political activities from German soil. So those are the things that have happened yesterday. Right now, of course, as we speak at Lumpini Park, which is just across from where I live, mm. there's a big crowd of yellow shirt protesters, right royalists, uh, showing up, showing their love and support for the monarchy institution. But let me stress, for the institution, not for the Bajut Chano Shah government. We have to learn to separate these two things. Right. Now, Kunbo, you have some opinions and some analysis about the Berlin and Bangkok situation. What do you uh -huh. say? <laughs> Um, I, I think the reaction from, from Berlin, from the Ministry mm -hmm. of Foreign Affairs is quite um, blunt right. in, in, in the view of, uh, you know, from Thai per perspective. Right. If we are to give a, a statement mm -hmm. to, to the, the head of uh, other country, we may do it in Thai style, will be like softly. But it's, it doesn't mean they're not diplomatic, but they are just very straightforward by saying that uh, if there's anything illegal, right. they'll take legal action, simply as that, right? Yeah, and, and, and before he said that uh, Germany would not, to, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but Germany would not allow any conducting of political activities on German soil, which could be okay if he was saying it about a prime minister or mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. but this is about a sovereign, uh, the king of the kingdom of Thailand. Now, uh, obviously, if you are Europeans, uh, you would you would probably feel like, well, what's the problem? But if you are Thai, and especially if you are a royalist, you would be like, whoa, uh, this is yeah. very insulting. I think in a way they set a, a model of how to treat each other as mm. equal, right? Uh -huh, and, and, and just be on, on the same ground, just like that. On the other hand, the German embassy yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a there's a letter shown. Is that letter to the foreign ministry here? Right. And within the letter, if you read between the line, they're quite careful in, in a way, almost protecting the right. Not almost. I think they protect the uh -huh. right of the protesters by stating that they are they, they welcome the the letter, um, if it's sent in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. They ask for the protection, um, according to their rights to for their safety, but they did state and, and use the word proportionately. Right. Which but means, you know, don't overdo it. But the, the fact is, um, okay, if we think about proportion, maybe the government underdo it because um, yesterday the number of the protesters massive, right? You were there. How was Tens your of feeling? Yeah, Tens can of you give your, I, I... your reflection? I saw the, the picture of Sathorn Street. Uh -huh. Both sides are full, and it's the biggest street, I think, in Bangkok. Perhaps. It's, it's, 
one of the bigger ones, and mm -hmm. uh, the the streets were full from Narathiwat intersection all the way down to the wireless Rama for Sato in Both the section. Both sides, right? Both sides. I mean, we after, after they unfurled, mm -hmm. sorry, after they raised the banner, yes, that was pretty much done, right? Officially, so we 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 wanted to go home, but we couldn't make our way through down Saton Road. So we thought we'd just go look around Narathiwat mm -hmm. and on the other side of the street, we were hoping it would be empty. It was not empty. It was jam-packed on both sides. So um, again, I'm horrible at guessing numbers, but possibly over 10,000, maybe 20,000 last night. Um, the, the police told um, 15,000. 15. But I, I think um, the protester think it is like Hundred thousand. Well, the real number is somewhere in between. <laughs> so like I said, I have been to the yellow shirt, the red shirt, the pop 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 saw the every. Yeah, so yeah. The police would have one estimate. Yes. The protesters would have another estimate. Okay. And so we never know. We never know, but and that's just, just the way it is. But just look at the picture. It's massive. It, it, right? it's, it's massive, especially for something that happened, you know, just like that, uh -huh. and not relying on any paid protesters. People just come out on their own, and it has turned into quite a festival. Really, the the past. Uh, the last mm -hmm. couple of protests, uh, they have their activities, they have little concert, they have musical performance, they have play performance, they have art performance, little kids do, uh, playing on skateboards, vendors everywhere, the economy of the grassroots is very healthy, whenever mm -hmm. there's a protest, so on and so forth. So if if the protest turn out to be sort of a mini festival, mm -hmm. and, do it, and if they do it twice or three times a week, it's likely that it is sustainable, some way, somehow, right? right? But uh, let's get back to the, the, the Berlin Bangkok issue. I'm, um, I'm not letting this one go yeah. quite, quite yet. Now, like, I mean, just next? again, just, just to be the, the devil's advocate, why would Kanak Rasadon ask for the protection from the German embassy? That's, I think that's, they, the, that's the representative yeah. of another government, a foreign government. I've read through their statement, right? right? I, I don't think they ask for the protection uh -huh. from, from, from Germany at all. They ask for the the information and what the, sort the of truth information from, from germany uh, for example uh did our king um exercise his power right on german soil basically i think they they, they want to know on which day he is in germany and uh -huh. if there's a law that is passed here signed then it means he signed it in germany Okay. And, and, and and that will bleach the sovereignty of German of uh, Germany. Uh, German sovereignty over their own soil. Yeah. But but is it illegal? Or it if it's just a breach of protocol? Um I'm not sure about that, frankly, because um it is I think traditionally you cannot do that if that country is not colonized by yours. Uh, so I think it's about the dignity of a nation. Uh, might might be because I mean I I, I, I I mean just to be honest, for example, if President Donald Trump come to Thailand on a visit or on a vacation, mm -hmm. and if there's some uh, state matter he has to attend to in the states, but he couldn't go back, he had to sign something. If he signed something here, would that be considered a breach of I, I think high sovereignty? It's, it's about whether, what is that something. If it's right. like passing a law, maybe it's not acceptable. Uh -huh. But um, I think this is the way it has been. However, my personal thought, you know, living in the era of, I don't know whether it's relevant, but I really think so. Living in the era of working from home, uh -huh. working in a distance, we can work anywhere. I was like, why not? You can sign a paper anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, the problem to me is more about the expense of, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if a head of a state lives in other country and he has to travel so much and with a lot of entourage, um, if there's a question from me, maybe I'll ask the question about the budget rather than where did he sign the paper. Well, but I know I'm... Um, Okay, I, I know it's a, still the international practice that you don't do it. Well, obviously there are many factors involved. Yeah. What does the law say? German law, international law, Thai yeah. law, so on and so forth. Neither mm -hmm. of us are lawyers. We are just here talking about the issues. That is all. Um, um, I, we, yep. we, we get a comment from a German citizen. We have a lot of German uh, followers, by the way. <laughs> Should I read this one? Just... 
as long as it doesn't land us in jail, you can read it. it I don't know because I did not start reading. You can I, I read it already. It's fine. Uh huh. I'm a German citizen and have lived, studied, and worked in Thailand for the last seven years. I'm glad the German government is finally becoming aware of the political situation and the alleged activities by the king from German soil. In my opinion, the German government should speak out much more strongly against the current Thai government and their interpretation of democracy. Hmm. Okay, so... This well, is from German citizen. Well, obviously, uh, Thailand's Thank political you. conflict is no longer local, right? I mean, before this, we see the Milk Tea Alliance, people in Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, so on and so forth, get involved supporting the Thai protesters, supporting Kanak Rasadon, and now we see uh, words from the German government uh, by way of the German foreign minister and also yesterday uh, yellow shirt protesters were in front of the German embassy before mm -hmm. Kanak Rastan got there and this morning uh, another group of yellow shirt protesters were in front of the American embassy uh, but mm -hmm. the, the purpose of the protest in front of those embassies are the same for the yellow shirts I mean they, they are seeing this movement Kanak Rastan as a part of an international global capitalist conspiracy to overthrow the Thai kingdom and turn Thailand into a colony. I That's what they believe. That China, US kind of thinking. All right, the, the, new, the new Cold War. Well, we can discuss uh, that on another show because that is a topic in and of itself. Right. However, other than the Kanara Sudan protest yesterday and the Yellow Shirt today, what has been happening yesterday and today is the parliament, right? Mm. The special mm -hmm. section by the parliament and uh, I have a few, uh, a couple of quotes from some MPs that I would like to read out and I would like Punbo for you to give your thoughts and <laughs> comment on these okay. things but the, the quotes that I have chosen is I, I chose them because they are very reflective of the hearts and minds of millions and millions of Thai people. Do not forget some of us are for democracy, some of us would rather have something else, and that is the reality of it. So let's begin with a quote from Kun Chum Sai, uh, sorry, Kun Chum Pon Chun Sai of the Democrat Party, the coalition partner. Now he said, every Thai in the entire kingdom agrees, do not discuss the monarchy institution. The institution isn't a national problem. Independence, unity, and safety are the most important. The king is the center of our hearts, the reason for our unity. Do not touch the institution. Thais will not allow it. Thais across the nation have demonstrated this love by donning the yellow shirts to show loyalty in every province, in every region. Therefore, do not touch the institution. Mm. I keep repeating this because he kept repeating it. And also, not just Kun Chum Pon. Everybody of the older generation, so not everybody, but a lot many people of the older generation, family members, friends, uncles, aunties, they all say the same thing. Do not touch. What do you think about this word? Yeah, that. Do not touch. If we can't even touch, then how do we talk? How do we have discussion? How do we have a dialogue? How do we, uh, how do we push reform? Okay, um, first of all, I think the word every Thai is wrong, right? But because, <laughs> he said yeah, it. <laughs> because, well, well, you see the number of people uh -huh. joining the protest, so it's not every Thai, that's one thing that we always have to remember. Not every Thai protest, and not every Thai not protest. Right. It makes <laughs> so, sense. Okay. It makes sense. Number two, do not touch. Hmm. Well, they, 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 can, they can think so, but there are also royalists who, who said they would not use the word do not touch, mm -hmm. but they, they want to say criticize with respect. Right. So even among yourself, I'm talking to the, the, the person who made this statement. Kun 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 even, even among yourselves as royalists, mm -hmm. you, you have diversity. Right. So, so that, that, that's all I would say, because mm -hmm. there are some royalists who say, you can criticize, you can talk about the budget, mm -hmm. you can talk about how, how, the, how, how the king lives um, mm -hmm. and, and work, mm -hmm. but please do it respectfully. Right. So, so, just so there are more moderate diversity. royalists and there are more extreme royalists. Yeah, and, and we just have to have to move it 
like closer a little bit. So right. the word do not touch will, will not be relevant anymore because you really cannot stop people from touching. Well, hopefully it won't be relevant, but it, in, at least in my opinion, in truth, I mean the word touch itself, it really is telling of how sensitive the topic is to That's the heart right. and mind right. of millions of people. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Yeah. So if these people believe right or wrong, if mm -hmm. they believe that you can't even touch you can't even whisper, you can't even do a little scratch, then everything that Kanara Sadon is doing right now in their hearts and mind is wrong. sinful, is mm -hmm. evil, is right. wrong. Which brings us to the next speaker, Kun Pai Bun Nititawan Palang Pacharat Party. He used the word there, Bang A Ta, there. He accused the protesters of having dared to surround the royal motorcade, that's the incident on the 14th of October, yes. and yelled obscenities. He said the act of the protesters was with evil intentions, sure right, mm -hmm. aimed at harming, harming, damaging the monarchy institution. He accused the protesters of wanting to change Thailand's political system into a republic. Now that's huge, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And also he said that only General Prayut Chan Ocha can defend the nation, the faith, and the institution. And that General Prayut was previously victorious in his war against COVID-19, and therefore he's the only one who can save us. And he used the term excellent to describe General Prayut. It was a delicious speech by <laughs> by by Hun Pai Boon. Now okay. a, a couple of things here. Obviously, the royal motor, the royal motor kit incident mm -hmm. is very important. Uh, if you had read the article by Reuters, they call it the tipping point mm -hmm. of the protest. Um, we, we're going to discuss that a little bit. Yes. But also another point being made here: Kun Pai Boon is not one hundred percent wrong when he mentioned the word republic. Right, it's not in the demands of Kanara Stone, not anywhere near mm -hmm. it. However, we would be lying and we would, wouldn't be doing our job as journalists to pretend that Republic of Thailand has not been a trending hashtag on Twitter. Right. Nor the graffiti Republic of Thailand has not been written on the street and on the walls by the protesters. These things do happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do we, how do we, um, understand this action? How do we explain this action? You mean uh, about the motorcade? Uh, let's take the Republic first, Republic of Thailand. Right. Um, as, you, as you have uh -huh. stated, it's not in the, in, in the statement uh -huh. of, of the, the leader of the protest, the official statement. It, it's not in, the, in part of that demand. It's not. And again, the word diversity come here. Right. In, in, in the crowd that is that big, there are, of course, some people who think so. Mm -hmm. And you cannot, you cannot yep. It'll be stop alive people to say that from, from, from thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and they just think. It, it's like, if I tell you now, I want a Ferrari car. Can I get it? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? So you can, you can say whatever you want. Um, whether it's possible or not is 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 another another issue. It seems that there's a lot of <coughs> misdirection here, right? Mm. Uh, Kanal Rasadon have their demands. Everybody knows what they mm. are, but you mm. get out, rewrite the constitution, reform the monarchy institution. Yes. However, when we get sidetracked and use the word like overthrow the monarchy or Republic of <coughs> Thailand, then you sidetrack the people, the people who might be sensitive and fragile over the monarchy question and can really uh, manipulated them, manipulated mm. them into actually thinking that Kanak Rasdon wants to create a republic. Yeah, I think, well, actions speak louder than words. You just have to keep watching them and watch them and listen to them and, right. and yeah, and, and interpret their action. But don't, don't distort it. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Well, one, one of the distortions seems to be that um, I, 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 other than going to the protest, I, I sat and watched the parliament session mm. because that's my life. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's pretty much the, the uh, coalition party members, Palang Basharat, MPs, uh, the senators, a lot of them did a, quite a good job. Uh, quite a few of them agreed that the constitution should be amended. Uh -huh. Even some senators agree that the power 
that they have to directly elect the prime minister is not fair and that should be amended. Yeah. But the strongest voice from the coalition parties and from the, the senators, they almost yell out the same thing, which is to identify General Bayut with the institution as almost inseparable. They go together. Mm -hmm. Thailand cannot have one without the other. And some way, somehow, that would manipulate I teach political communication at Amasar, so I know about propaganda. Mm -hmm. And some way, somehow, mm -hmm. that would work into the psyche of the people who are either yellow church or Palangyap, silent majority, to actually think, wow, wait a second. They can't go without each other, and therefore, we have to protect them both, both the institution and general budget. So they put them in the same package. It's the same package. It's a combo ah. deal. Now, you as an activist mm -hmm. who has been fighting against the dictatorship, quote unquote, regime for so long, mm -hmm. how do you feel when you see something like this happening, this, this systematic propaganda that has been working quite well against your group? I think the, the strategy of putting Prayut with, um, with the monarchy mm -hmm doesn't work anymore and it's rather harmful to the monarchy right. because I've seen a lot of comment uh, from people from the opposite side uh -huh. on, on the social media. Many of them said, I'm okay with Prayut get out. Right. I'm okay with um, constitution reform. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with the monarchy reform. That yep. means they already separate the package. Okay, that, that, that brings up the question. Hmm. Would Kanak Rasadon have more support from the public if they back off from the monarchy reform? This is still debatable, uh -huh. even even among the pro democracy side. Right. Yeah. Some some of us say, oh, we 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 will do uh, better without the third one now. It doesn't mean they don't support the third one. Yeah. It it mean maybe not now, so that we can achieve these two first. While the protesters and, and, and the leaders said, um, without the third one, we will not have this big crowd. Both. They they think the third yeah. one no, is I mean. you know is kind of like sexy agenda that attract people in. And they could be right too, well, I don't know. Nothing is black and white. Nothing is 100%, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, I have friends who sympathize with mm -hmm. the protesters, with Kanak mm -hmm. Rasadon, and they want to come out, but they don't come out because of the, the demand. Uh -huh. Now, personally, I don't believe them. They're not going to come out no matter what. <laughs> but, <laughs> but still, there is a point to be made there. But also, yeah. at the same time, I can understand Kanak Rasadon. If you're going to do something, do it all the way. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, cultural belief tradition values aside, if your design, if your goal to actually have that democratic constitutional monarchy, mm -hmm. reform cannot be made without involving the institution. Mm -hmm. However, the question is, does it all have to be at the same time? Rome wasn't built in one day. Mm -hmm. There might be a point in, let's, let's, let's do it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. But regardless, in we are there, they made the demands, we are here. In terms of what will happen uh -huh. first, that will be, it will be in order anyway, right. this three demand. Uh -huh. Because, well, Prayut get out is up to Prayut, I don't know when it will happen. But constitution amendment is already the agenda in the parliament. Right. So this will take place first. Whether it's a yes or no, you will know the result first. Right. Monarchy reform, the same as any kind of reform, take time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's just get those 250 <coughs> senators out but, first. But it's interesting that the, the protesters now very much focus on monarchy reform. Uh -huh. And in, in many of the protests, um, the, the majority of time they spend on talking about the monarchy is yeah. more than, than, than other agenda. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm not sure if they will think about the proportion of, of their communication or not. Uh, at, at times, that there's a sequence of events, a uh, uh, domino effect. One thing led to another, right? Yes. If we all remember, the first time they come out, they came out on January the 18th. Sorry, no, January, July the 18th. The mm -hmm. three demands were not these. The three demands were stop harassing of 
uh, persecuting the, the people, mm. uh, rewrite the constitution, and hold new elections. The mm. monarchy wasn't in there. Mm. It wasn't until the different movement united into Kanara Sadon and then Mubanasaya submitted the 10 demands on uh, September the 20th. The day after the big gathering of Sanam Ruang. Yeah, I think when, when the, the, the Ten Demand actually take place at Thammasat gathering first. Before yes, the, before that. That was the 10th of September or the 10th of August. 10th of August. August. 10th 10th of August. August. Yes. But then she submitted the demand to the, she tried right. to submit it to the Supreme Court, but then mm -hmm. the police accepted it instead, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then, but since then, the three demands have changed and the monarchy reform became the third demand. And of mm -hmm. course, then that brings us to the royal motorcade incident, and then the yeah. arrest and charging of Article 110 against uh, three activists, mm -hmm. and then the incident of the gentleman, the, the restaurant manager who, who raised the portrait of King Rama the Knight, mm -hmm. and then the incident of uh, His Majesty the King and the Queen congratulating mm -hmm. that man, mm -hmm. and then. <laughs> And then the, the, the new poster by Kanal Rasadon, uh, it, uh, very brave, very good. They oh, took exciting. the words, yeah. they, they took those words and they ran with it for the next protest. And then it's the march to the German embassy. It yeah. seems like it's almost a game. I dare you. No, I dare you. No, I dare you. No, I dare you. It's, and it's a dangerous game. It's, a, it's much more dangerous than anyone would realize. There's an observation today. Uh -huh. uh, someone said that. Yeah, yesterday was the peak of the action already. Now what next? Exactly. That was yeah. unprecedented and, and, yesterday. And, 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 and this protest keep exciting people, keep keep people on, on their foot and look right. forward to the next big thing. And yeah, and they say yesterday might be the biggest one already, then what next? What's and next? Yeah, it, it's like, yeah, they keep testing the, the water. Talking the mar about the market a little bit, and, and you were there as well, it, it's mentioned in the parliament today a yes. lot that the, the incident of the market, um, someone has to be responsible for it, oh. and they are pointing at Prayut, that if, if this happened, you let it happen, you you have to resign because of this, some, well, some the, MP demand that. The opposition point at Prayut, the yeah. government point at the Kanal Rasadon, right? It's a matter, it's a matter of perspective. I, I, like you said, I was there. Yes, tell I us can about tell it. you what happened, uh -huh. right? The main body of Kanal Rasadon moving up from Victory Monument, Democracy, Democracy Monument, uh, towards the government house. Uh -huh. It's a huge wave of people, right? Uh -huh. Very crowded. So I and my team, Two of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, we, we had four people that day. <laughs> two of us decided to find a different route. So we looked around and we yeah. came to the front of the government house, yeah. and there were some other protesters who uh, went the same route and some mm. protesters, but in the middle, uh, the police block. Uh, the bridge crossing over, so the main body was stuck on the on the one side, and we mm. were on the other side. And then one thing led to another. Before anyone know it, the royal monarchy come up from behind. There was no announcement. No, yeah, one, no knew. one knew. No one knew. It's a surprise. No one knew. It was a surprise, right? I was standing off to the side between a small group of yellow shirts and mm -hmm. a group of Kanat Rasadon. They were mm -hmm. talking to each other, some yelling a little bit because, you know, that's what we all do, brothers and sisters. We love, we <laughs> fight. And then the Royal Mother can come up, and then again, I was there. The, a crowd of people converge on the motorcade. That happened. Fact is fact. We cannot deny it. And they were chanting certain slogans, for example, our tax money. That mm -hmm. happened. They raised the three finger salute. That happened. And some people raised one finger? Did that happen? I did not see that because I was busy trying to take a video. <laughs> uh. Right? Did that happen? I do not know. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are many witnesses, mm -hmm. many uh, photos, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. But that did happen. But everything happened in a matter of minutes. And then the police, who were forming a ring around the motorcade anyway, sort of pushed everyone aside. And everyone mm. gave way, and the, the royal motorcade went through without any problem, without any issues. It was a matter of minutes. So mm. the question become, is this obstruction of traffic, perhaps? So what is the law against obstruction of traffic? Maybe a fine, a thousand baht, mm. 10,000 baht. However, three activists were charged with Article 110, and that is up to life in prison. What they did, perhaps legally wrong, is for the judge to decide, right? But with the punishment or the crime being charged with, is that 
justify? That's the question. Yeah, I think it's quite clear to 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 everybody that is not. And I don't know if there's any other law the police can can find to to use because, yeah, obviously it seems to me like they cannot find a suitable law to use and they just choose the one. harshest one. <laughs> they just pick one that they think they can, you know, distort the the, the fact into right. into that guilt. So I I don't think the the, the court will will make them guilty. It will it will be just too harmful to the monarchy itself. That's also a good point that that, mm. that um I, I read uh, an article by Good Provit what an upload classic yes. English. We always give credit to those who who, <laughs> who did the work. Um yeah. uh, he, he wrote about how the the ultra royalists are the one that, that's harming the monarchy more than anyone else mm. by their actions, by their anger, by their uh, right. commitment to violence or, or their, their willingness to commit violence. And mm. that's that has been the most harmful to the monarchy. But in any case, in regard to the Royal Mordecai incident, a lot of people are already making indictment on who did it, who is wrong, including the senators and the MPs are already saying Kadawa Stone is guilty for this. But yeah. let's let's hold our breath, take a step back, read, and remember one thing, even though we don't live in a full democracy, not even close, still there's such a thing as innocent before proven guilty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let there be an investigation. I'm sure people want to know the truth about what yeah. happened. Um, let me just read Any? off one more, just right, one right, more, right. last one, one more. Okay, this one is from Kun Chai Yut Tanak Kamanuk Son, uh, Party also. Um, he said that politicians are behind the youth movement, the Kanak Rastan movement. He said that these politicians have incited feelings against the monarchy institution. These politicians are manipulating the youth, and these politicians are trying to destroy Thailand's future and the future of the youth. Now he kept using the word future, future, anakot, anakot. <laughs> so we know what that means, right? And this is nothing new, right? Blaming someone as the puppet master behind a protest. Yeah. He, Kun Chayut also went on to say that the government must cut off three things. One, these politicians. Two, the money pipeline that is feeding the protesters. And three, social media. That's the end of disrupt. We're going to turn into about. China. That's all I care about. I want to need VPN. But in any case, okay, uh, a couple of issues here. To this day, there's, there are mm. still accusations that, mm. let's just fade it, that Tanatol, Biyabut, Chor Panika are behind this. I think just because they all speak the same language. Right. And when, when people share ideology, does it mean they're behind it? I think, you know, I, I don't know whether they're behind it or not, but to claim that they are behind it just because they speak the same language doesn't seem logical to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, you know, how, how about the royalists? Is it backed by the government? Well, or they have their own mind. A lot of them are civil servants and bureaucrats, <laughs> and a lot of them have yeah, beautiful true, haircuts but like I mean, me. The, the, the royalists inside, yeah. Well, but it's so there, there are right. It it exists. People, it, yeah, it's it, diversity. Isn't that another cultural thing? Because the passport protest in modern history, anyway, mm -hmm. if, if, every 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 protest, someone is behind it. Whether yellow, whether red, whether copper or salt, there are people. There's money. There's a pipeline behind it. So these guys just can't imagine that a protest can happen organically. I kind of question why, why, why people think that way. Mm -hmm. And my answer to myself may be because of their fear. They don't like the idea that these people think like this by themselves. These people drive themselves out. Right. They don't like that idea because it's too fearful. Maybe. Actually, that's a very good point. I, I would use the word shameful. Shameful? When, you have, when you have 14, 15, 16 year old kids <laughs> saying how horrible, corrupted, unjust, authoritarian, dictatorial, fascist, incompetent, I can go on and on and on, you are. And bastards. That's, that, well. <laughs> well I mean, if I were the prime minister, yeah. or if I were the government, or if I were those who support the prime minister, mm. I would. It would be too shameful to admit that these kids are actually saying that from the bottom of their heart. Somebody mm. evil, a mastermind, must be behind them. There must be the boogeyman. 
behind this corrupting the Thai youth, and therefore this is something they just can't grasp. And maybe that's why now uh, the the election commission has just put charge um, the the yeah. criminal charge <laughs> on the the leaders of the previous Future Forward Party just yesterday, right? Just, just yesterday, yesterday. Kunal Thorn. Uh, uh, yeah, he's charged with criminal charge. I I, I don't uh, remember. Well, well, he has to to charge um, uh, for. Loaning, ah, the money, loaning the loaning money, money to his party and also for having a previous share in his in, in that celebrity gossip magazine that ah, that, that what got him uh disbarred yeah, yeah. as as the as the MP. So but now loan, the loaning issue they are they are two, filing criminal charge. Two hundred million baht. Right. Yeah, right. Charge. And and basically this is another example of there has to be the puppet master. There has to be the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Dubai can breathe easy. It's no longer Thaksim Chinawat. He has someone else. It's Thanathorn to move and get. So all of this can be pointed toward Thanathorn. So they are going to go after Thanathorn. Little do they realize that if they do that, that will only strengthen the Kanat Rastorn protest because it will be another example of abuse of power, injustice, double standard, so on and so forth. The very thing Kanat Rastorn is out there protesting against. I'm mm. done. <laughs> Comments. Are there Anything any you choose? Jasper, I think the British monarchy might work like the protesters want in Thailand. But in the end, British do not have a constitution. A better comparison would be Netherlands. Scandinavian, etc., and maybe Japan too. And maybe Japan. Yeah, too. I'm. I'm very much interested in in the Japan model because it's Asian, and maybe mm. yeah, there's something in common with us. Any of your pick? I, I'm not. I have never looked at the comments, so <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. If, if you scroll up, there's just a few questions from Brandon Smith. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he's got a few interesting ones. Can you read out one, John? Mm. Okay, okay. I You're can seeing it, right? One. A yeah. few questions here. How does Thailand change so that you are not rewriting your constitution every five minutes? <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. The <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. When, when the PM refers to Thai style democracy, how does this differ from the accepted understanding of democracy? <laughs> oh, nice. Are the current issues in Thailand a result of um, 1932 not, not bringing real reform and remaining incomplete? Does real reform look like, in part, a constitutional monarch similar to the English? All good questions. <laughs> I think some of your question is the answer in itself. In so, itself. But first yeah. of all, I mean, we have so, so many constitutions nice because <laughs> we have so many coups. <laughs> and a, con a new constitution follow every yeah, coup. Jasper Jess also example. mentioned the endless coup d'etat. Um, yeah, I think that that's why um, Kanara Sadon also wants want it to be written in, in the constitution that the king has the duty mm -hmm. to protect the constitution right. and cannot endorse a coup. Mm -hmm. So if that is written, I think it will make it harder for, for, for him to, to endorse a coup mm -hmm. because he will not have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. He just follow the constitution mm -hmm. and it's never written before. And well, to be fair, this current king has never, has not yet endorsed a coup. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And, and, and so maybe a good time to put that in. Um, Jamie said, when the dinosaurs die and the younger generation becomes middle-aged, we won't be having this conversation. Time will change attitudes. Well, that is absolutely correct. Time will change. Time change, culture change, attitude change. The liberal kids that we see today, they're going to be running this country one day and they will be considered conservative by the generation <laughs> after them, right? Right. And you and they I They will be less liberal. Ex exactly. And that is just the evolution of humanity. I just hope I'll... Well, I don't want to live to see it because then I'll be too old. <laughs> but also, just to get back to what Brandon was saying earlier, uh, the, the revolution in 1932, as uh, Kun Bo and I discussed in 
another episode before. It's about the culture, right? In 1932, we had a political change. We did not have a cultural change. The political system went from absolute monarchy to constitutional monarchy, but the culture and the mindset of the Thai people was very much a patriarchy, feudalism. And hence, we have the problem we have today. And that's why we have a large, significant portion of the population still believe and have the values that they do, the values that are quite feudalistic, but that has never been changed. However, what is going on right now is that change, that cultural revolution, the cultural evolution, the change is taking place where people are actually demanding more openness, more freedom of speech, more freedom of expression, the chance to talk, to discuss, to do so on and so forth. That is happening right now. If you ask me, you ask Kumbo, if we had imagined this a year ago or two years ago, never. But it is happening right now. And therefore, Khanat Rasadon may win now, or they might not win now, but they will win later because you cannot change the tide of time. It is happening. And go read more nice article on this rap website. Thank you very much. This. Shall we end it there? <laughs> I have another engagement. Okay, maybe to. just last one. Uh, last um, one, okay. not, not so um, heavy, but... Interesting. James said, apparently a member of parliament has cut his wrist. Kausot said so. Any news on that? Well, I, I saw it briefly before I, I, I arrived here. Um, yeah, a politician cut his wrist as a form of protest Against. to call for the for Prayut to get out. And I was like, well... Um, Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Which politician you know, was it? Um, uh, some, someone you don't know. So I, I, I think, yeah, he, he tried to... <laughs> Well, then he has to I don't, I don't, want, I, I, I don't I, want to say he called for attention, but you know that kind of thing is what activists do, not politicians. And yeah, don't do it again. I, I, I sympathize with the sentiment, but <laughs> as you said, you are a representative of the people. Yeah. You're not you supposed have, to be you cutting your wrist. Mechanism, right? yeah. There are other ways to do things. And, and I think he is not uh, badly like hurting them himself. Uh, I, 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 I think he's safe and just don't do it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one one last comment okay, I think one last would comment. be good. Yes. From Rob Reberg. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um however some royalists don't seem to wish to talk about um past actual changes or proposed future changes at all. The very idea of looking at the monarchies in other countries seem to upset them. It seems in denial of changes that the Thai kingdom went through. Why do they think that keep things at currently uh, is the best solution? Okay, it's another question about royalists, right? Yeah. Let me just say this. I would love to have a royalist sitting here <laughs> and we have a discussion, right? Because sometimes conversation can be too one-sided. Yeah. We would love to have one sitting here and just have a talk. Let's have a discussion about the why and the how of things. So if anyone out there is a royalist or know someone who wants to be on this rock talk, <laughs> let's have a chat. Let's have a chat. Let's, let's share opinions. Let's exchange ideas rationally, with reason, and with manner. And let's yeah. see if Thailand can move forward with exchange of rational, reasonable dialogue. We certainly do. Does that satisfy you, Sean? You don't look happy. <laughs> well, my quick, my, my, my quick answer for this is royalist is conservative and it's natural for conservative to, to you know, dislike change. And that there is some scientific reason to back that up and we can talk about it in the next time. Okay, scientific reason, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kunbo. Sean, you're happy about that. Okay, <laughs> fine. All right, well, um, I think that's it for us tonight. Okay. okay. Thank you for all the comments. We'll go and, and read all of them. And and you know what? Please do comments even if you if we don't read them out. I use your comments for my articles. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. That's uh, how I work. Your comments inspire me. Okay. <laughs> I use them. They will come right? and touch you. So yeah. I will always read every one of them and here and there I will use them for my articles. But so thank you very much for all the comments and thank you very much for continuing to watch us and then we and will to share. And to share. And we'll see you once again whenever we're 
Yeah, next Monday for sure. <laughs> next Monday for sure. In between, sure. Between, in between we might have some surprise. We might have some surprise, okay? So stay okay. tuned. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you.